Hello dear friends, I am Daisy Victoria. Today I will be showing you how to make a very simple cloth face mask with ties. This mask style is perfect for quick assembly, batching, and all skill levels. Since elastic and bias tape have become difficult to find and some medical staff are reporting a preference for ties, I created a new variation. This style meets the following requirements. Fast to make and good for batching, a filter pocket option, a nose wire option, no elastic or bias tape, flannel sandwiched between tightly woven cotton, and it's very simple and accessible to all skill levels. Medical facilities have called for homemade masks due to the shortage. Many medical staff are being asked to use the same mask for hours or days, and some have resorted to wearing bandanas. These homemade masks are not as effective as medical grade masks and respirators, however they are better than other options. They can be worn over N95 respirators to extend the life of the respirator, or used in lower risk settings to free the limited resources for higher risk situations. Additionally, we can make our own personal masks which also helps by freeing up more resources for professionals. If you choose to wear a mask yourself, it can help prevent the spread of your own germs, and keep in mind you can be asymptomatic. It can discourage you from touching your face, and it will also make you look super cool. Studies evaluating the efficacy of cloth masks are limited, and in case you would like to read the information yourself, I will link some below. I will also link a website to help you find donation sites. Additionally, you can call local medical facilities such as hospitals, clinics, veterinarians, fire departments, police stations, nursing homes, anywhere that would normally use masks. Ask if they need cloth masks and if they have any specifications. This mask is made from three layers of fabric, two layers of tightly woven cotton and one layer of cotton flannel. Tight weaves are preferred for protection and you can quickly inspect a fabric by checking whether it's see-through and how thick it feels. Flannel is a good option for the inner layer because the texture of the flannel provides a more tortuous path for particles to maneuver through. Each mask piece is a rectangle 9 inches by 7 inches or in metric about 23 by 18 centimeters. For this project you'll need three layers of fabric, two cotton layers and a cotton flannel layer, two strips for ties, I'll show you how to cut those in a moment, pins, scissors, tape measure and or other measuring device, a marking pencil, and a straight edge. For the nose wire option, you'll need about four inches of thin bendable wire. I happen to have 22 gauge. To create the ties, I am cutting full widths of the fabric. Mine is 44 inches wide. To make it easier to cut, I'm folding the fabric in half, then folding it in half again so it is four layers thick. Using a tape measure or a measuring gauge, I am marking two inches, that's about five centimeters, and then using a straight edge, in this case a yardstick, to draw a straight line with a marking pencil. Then I am cutting out two ties per mask. Fold the edges of one tie strip in toward the center and iron flat. Once you've done that, fold in half again and iron flat again. Repeat for the second tie. While making batches of masks, I found the easiest way to mark my pleats was by ironing before I sewed the mask. Take the outer layer of fabric, fold it in half and iron. Then fold each of those halves in half again and iron. These will be your pleat markings. To create the filter pocket, fold over the top edge of the lining layer about one half inch, which is one and a quarter centimeters, and iron it flat. Treating the outer fabric and the flannel as one layer, sew the lining fabric onto this right sides together, leaving the folded edge as you ironed it. You are sewing just the two shorter sides here. Turn right side out and press at the edges. Find the center of each raw mask edge and the center of each tie strip. Match these together and pin the tie strips to top and bottom edges of the mask. Be sure not to catch the lining layer on top as this will need to be open for the filter pocket. Mm -hmm. 
if you are including a nose wire, insert that inside the upper tie strip at the top edge. I find it easiest to insert the wire first and then sew on the binding, being careful not to sew the wire. Because I used the selvage edges of my fabric, I did not need to sew the edges of my ties. If the ends of your ties are not cut as selvage, sew along them to prevent fraying. Fold the three pleats and pin them. Pleats should be facing down. Top stitch to hold them in place. At this point, we have a very large filter pocket opening. Sew about two and a half inches or a bit more than six centimeters from each edge to secure the mask layers. These seams will be just below the upper edge binding. Congratulations, you have a pleated mask with a filter pocket and potentially a nose wire if you added that. Once you go through the process, these masks are very easy and quick to make. I've already made over 80 masks myself in just a few days and I have more ready to go. I've had so many feelings surrounding the pandemic and this is one way I can take action and feel helpful. If you are experiencing anxiety, I encourage you to look for coping mechanisms and positive ways to help. There's a lot of conflicting information on masks now, and I want to encourage everyone to help out and stay safe. Some people have actually been discouraging mask makers, and I want you to know that if you are making masks, your efforts are very much appreciated. Remember that many people are afraid right now and may be acting out of that fear. Please remember to stand in your own confidence and don't let someone else's fear bring you down. After all, we all have plenty of our own fears to deal with before adding more. More and more of us are becoming personally affected by this, and I wish you all the best of luck and hope you stay safe and healthy through our tumultuous and socially distant days. Please subscribe if you are interested in more videos about sewing as well as fantasy and historical costuming, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.